Hello everyone, I'm Challenger Jackal and welcome back to the final part of this Noring Challenge series, where we take on the last story to see where it's possible to beat the game without collecting any rings. But before we begin, if you love Sonic content or challenge videos in general, and you want to see more content like this on the channel, do me a favour and smash the subscribe button and like the video and hit that naughty bell. We're now on the road to 2k subscribers by the end of the year, and any help to hit that goal is truly appreciated. Now, without any further ado, let's jump straight in. Once you've eventually completed all four of the stories on offer, you may think that this is the end of the content that Heroes has in store, but no, if you include the extra missions that will unlock the super hard mode upon collecting all of the emblems, as well as the multiplayer, there's still a lot more that you can experience. This includes the final story, that is only available to you once you have completed multiple requirements. The first is to simply beat the game of all four of the teams, however once you have done that, all we have to do is collect all seven Chaos Emeralds. Now unlike the previous adventure titles where the emeralds are incorporated into the story's narrative, so you naturally obtain them as you play through the game, Sonic Heroes takes inspiration from the classic games. You see throughout the stages you will find these suspicious looking keys usually locked in steel crates, and as you probably imagine, these things serve as the gateway to the special stages, but it isn't as simple as you'd think. The moment you've collected a key, you cannot take damage of any kind for the rest of the stage, as the moment you do so the key will no longer be in your possession, and this is easier said than done, when a lot of the stages in this game can last well over 10 minutes. If you want an easy time in accessing these special stages, hunt for the keys either in Team Roses or Chaotic Stages. Since those stages tend to be half the length of the other two stories, retaining the key is far easier and upon hitting the goal you are transported to the special stages. Now a lot of fans seem to compare these with the half pipe in Sonic 2, and to be honest I can't really see the resemblance. If anything, these stages are far more like the special stages found in Knuckles Chaotix, where you need to collect the spears whilst traversing a cylinder dome until you reach the end. To be specific, your goal in these special stages is to hunt down the always moving emeralds before it reaches the end of the stage, avoiding the many bombs all the while filling your boost gauge by collecting the spears. If you don't know what you're doing, these things can be brutal thanks in part to the slippery nature of Heroes controls, but there is a way to utterly cheese them and collect the emeralds right away. Similarly to the grind rails, you're supposed to hold the boost button down and not match it. So as long as you instantly switch to your power character, whose controls are far less slippery, and maintain the boost gauge by collecting the spears, you can literally grab the emeralds within a few seconds. I'm not even kidding. And yeah, this isn't a Sonic Advance 2 situation either, thank god. You only have to collect the 7 emeralds with one of the teams, with said total being carried across the board. With all 7 of the emeralds collected, by returning to the story mode screen where you are greeted with a 5th portrait with a mysterious figure. No, I'm kidding. That's clearly Metal Sonic, like, come on. Despite Heroes tradition, inspiration, it does have somewhat of a story. To set the record straight, all of our previous encounters with the good Doctor himself, well all of that was Metal Sonic in disguise, in the ploy of obtaining the battle data from Sonic, Shadow, Chaos through Cream's Tribe Tricola, and of course Froggy. All along, Eggman was actually the mysterious client hinted at in the chaotic story, employing them so they could save him from his prison that Metal locked him in, despite having no intention to actually pay them. Metal did all of this in order to defeat Sonic and take over the world himself. Now his motives are still routed in his origins in Best in Sonic, they just give him way more of a personality this time around, as his dialogue during the final battle actually hints that he did all of this out of his fear of Sonic, from his desperation making him believe that he's actually the real deal. Overall, this incarnation of Metal Sonic is far more interesting than either his debut in CD or his future appearances. They really succeeded in giving him his own ambitions, that actually do a great deal in humanising him, without tarnishing his original purpose of rivaling his organic counterpart. I really wish they expanded upon this idea further, rather than reverting to a willing slave of Eggman that really takes the edge away from his character, making him no more important than just a mere badnik. Anyway, with all of the team's data collected, Neo Metal Sonic deploys his trump card as he morphs into this dragon-looking monstrosity known as Metal Madness, sporting one of the most drawn-out transformation sequences that I have ever witnessed. Seriously, this thing is coming so close to rivaling the monotony of Goku's Super Saiyan 3 transformation.
With all hope seemingly lost, the team's going together with the 7 Chaos Emeralds. With each taking on the newly transformed Metal Sonic, so Team Sonic can buy some time to tap into their super forms. Now this encounter comes in 3 phases, which are basically identical as you have to take on Metal Manners with all 3 of the teams one after the other. The whole gimmick of this fight are the clothed patches on Metal's body. They come in 3 flavours, symbolising the 3 different formations. So on a first glance, you might believe that you need to match the colour with the corresponding formation, but it's quite the opposite. If Metal sports a blue patch for example, then attack Attacks dealt from a speed character will do no damage, and that applies to the other two formations as well. In essence, we can't just stick to one formation here, we have to showcase our mastery of each to defeat this monstrosity. Throughout the entire fight, Metal Manus has four attacks, with each of them being incredibly telegraphed. He has a flamethrower that you just need to jump over, a tail swipe dealt with in the exact same manner, and two variations of homing shots. The first will connect with the foothold and leave an electrified tree stalk thing on the arena for a limited time, but there's plenty of room to manoeuvre around the thing, and even then, as long as you remain suspended in the air, these things can't actually reach you. The final set of projectiles have the same properties as the bandits that can immobilise your team members when they catch you, so if this ever occurs, you just have to destroy the crystallised prison, which is honestly quite easy to do, so you aren't in any real danger by any means. So now that we're all on the same page, Metal Madness isn't possible to clear ringless, because of the mandatory rings that are forced on you by Team Rose and Chaotix Arena. Team Dark on the other hand have a ring formation that is spaced out, making their portion of this fight possible. None of this even matters though, I'm not exaggerating when I say even without the Team Blast exploit, Heroes has one of the easiest final boss fights in any Sonic game. For Team Rose and Team Dark we do use the Team Blast exploit because why wouldn't we? For Team Chaotix on the other hand, I actually did beat that portion without said exploit, all we had to do was make use of Esbill's invisibility. I'm not sure why, but the colour of Metal Manus never turned to blue at any point, and since he concentrated his attack solely on Charmy, we could just home and attack spam his weak spot until he eventually went down. Granted, this did take around 6 minutes, because we could only do 1 HP of damage at a time. However, we were never in any real danger, as we defeated Metal Manus with only 2 rings. As the combined force of the three teams is able to temporarily subdue Metal Sonic long enough for Team Sonic to utilise the power of the Chaos Emeralds, it's here where our beloved Big Red is utterly disrespected, as he does not assume his lovely super form, instead being relocated to the psychic status, complete with a glowing yellow ball. Okay, for Tails, this does make some degree of sense, as even in the classics he could only transform with the aid of the Super Emeralds, but come on! Knuckles not only had his own super form originally, he's the guardian of the damn Master Emerald. He is capable of not only sensing Chaos Energy, but harnessing it as well. So why is he shafted so hard here? Was it really that hard to turn in pink? Really? In this final face-off, we essentially assume the role of a counter-striker. What I mean by that is that whilst Metal can't damage us at all in our super state, we can't do the same to him either by conventional means. So what gives? The whole gimmick around this super battle revolves around the Team Blast. The Team Blast is the only way to actually deal damage to Metal in his current state. To defeat him, we have to fill up the Team Gauge 5 times by countering his various attacks. Each formation has an attack they can counter. When Metal barrages you with his Crystallized Energy Beam, that's Sonic's cue to repel it with the homing attack. When one of the Egg Fleets are thrown our way, Knuckles can destroy it with ease. And of course, Tails can deal with the projectiles with his Thunder Shoot. Naturally, by doing this, you'll be filling the Team Gauge up until you're able to barrage him with a supercharged Team Blast. So the question becomes this, can you fill the team gauge enough times before we run out of our initial 50 rings? And? The answer is yes. And no. The answer depends on which version of Sonic Heroes you're actually playing. Technically, the PC version does in fact have its own version of the Team Blast exploit. It's just way harder to pull off and I've never seen it personally done before. So in the case of the PC version, since Metal does have a tendency to wait in between each of his attacks, you most likely will need to destroy the ring balloon to replenish your ring count. The console ports on the other hand where the Team Blast exploit is viable? Yeah, this fight becomes a joke. Even if you aren't well versed with the technique, as long as you're able to pull it off with some degree of consistency, 50 seconds is more than enough time to fill the team gauge over 5 times. And with that, Metal Overlord meets his end, in the wake of the superpower of cheese. With Metal's defeat, he reverts back to his iconic base form, as Sonic challenges him to a rematch at any time. The teams part on their separate ways, and the poor Chaotix are still yet to be paired, as Eggman flees from the final fortress immediately after the battle, concluding the final story of Sonic Heroes with the knowledge that no, it's unfortunately impossible to beat the game without collecting any rings. And with that, we've reached the end of yet another No Rings Challenge series. Whilst this was extremely fun to do, our failure once again came from the love Sonic Team have with their precious mandatory rings. 
It was surprising that out of all of the stories, Team Chaotix were the ones with the least amount of bullshit, when you might have assumed the opposite like I did when beginning to write the series as a whole. This challenge gave me a greater appreciation for the playstyle, and the depth that can be found within if you look hard enough. So maybe Shadow the Hedgehog won't be so bad after all when we eventually get to that game. As always, I just want to take this moment to thank all of you for watching the video, and for your continuous support of the channel. None of this would have been possible without you guys coming out in droves, and building this community into what it is today. This is all for Thanks to you, so thank you. And whilst I did say I will reveal the next challenge upon the conclusion of Heroes, I still need a little bit more time before I can clarify what exactly we'll be doing. However, next time we will finally be taking on Sonic 06. Now this won't be the ringless episode as I'm saving that for Project 06. What I can say is that this challenge will be just as infuriating and intense. I promise it's going to be worth the wait. So before I sign off, I just want to let you guys know, next week, I will be away from home for a few days for some personal reasons. I will be back before the tail end of July though, so that's when I will be starting production on this next video. So in the meantime, I hope you enjoy your summer days. We're in a heatwave right now and I'll be back very soon. With that said, I've taken up enough of your time, so take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye for now.